Hey guys, what's up? This is Burn here, and I have some Black Ops 2 gameplay from uh, Nuketown 2025, and I also have uh, Nate here, my buddy Nate, who I was playing with for a little bit. Uh, yeah. yeah, so it's a dual com kind of thing. If you guys remember the dual com I did back with uh, Lone Star, this is kind of going to be the same thing, except he's going to be talking from, uh, where are you from? Love Park, Illinois. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy people. Um, basically, this is going to be a first impressions video of Black Ops 2. Um, Nate, you've played out of Nuketown 25, 2025, yes. I believe. Yeah. What, yes, sir. How is it like playing on a different game mode from this, From judging from the game modes that you've played on? Well, well I've noticed all around... For the most part, it's been a lot more balanced than previous Call of Duties, especially Black Ops 1. Um, what game modes have you played, and on what maps? Uh, I don't exactly know the names of the maps yet, but I've played Domination, i played Demolition, and a few other ones. Uh, is there any particular map that has, like, stood out to you? Like, if you don't know the name, could you somehow describe it? Yeah, uh, one of the maps that really stood out to me would probably be, be the one, I'm not sure the name of it, but you're on a boat, it's a yacht, like a cruise ship, and, I don't know, it just had, it just had like a, it wasn't too small of a map, it wasn't too big, and it had just the right amount of cover, and the spawns were set up right, and... With it being, you know, on a boat, it had its own type of theme, and I, I felt that really added to the funness of the map. Um, what gun do you currently use as your primary in your uh, class? Me, right now, I am a level 16, I believe, and I am using the MTAR with the tracking scope and the foregrip. And it's, it's one of the first weapons that you start off with, and... Overall, it's a very balanced weapon. It's very good. Not too overpowered, not too accurate, not too inaccurate. Perfect amount of range. It's a very good starter weapon. I recommend it to anyone that's just starting out in the game. Um, the gun I'm using in this gameplay specifically uh, is the MP7, and I'm playing uh, Nuketown 2025, of course, so it's more of a uh, close quarters kind of deal. So. <laughs> I've noticed that gun is a lot more well-rounded and balanced in this game than in Modern Warfare 3. Well, it's it depends on what situation you're using it in. I mean, in this... Yeah, I mean, on a map like Newtown 2025, it's going to work wonders, but if you move up to one of the bigger maps, which I've okay. seen Black Ops offers a lot of them... That's not necessarily um, true, though, because if you're at a certain range, there are some rangey parts in Nuketown 2025, like the the flanks are kind of rangey when you come around the uh, trucks, so it's not going to do too well in that, because the recoil with the scope I'm using is not that accurate, it doesn't allow it to be that accurate, but right. if you're up close, it's going to kick, kick your ass, um... Another gun that I notice people using on Nuketown 2025 is the uh, Vector. Yeah, and people are using that a lot. Yeah, I picked that up later in this gameplay and I start <laughs> using it, and it's a decent gun. It's kind of like in between the MTAR and the MP7. So, it's got the range, it's also got the fire rate, and it's got the compact size. So, best of both Not worlds. I mentioned this is the first time we've seen this gun since Modern Warfare 2, so... Yeah. I mean, and, and as we all remember, it wasn't an incredibly amazing gun in Modern Warfare 2. Then again, we're talking about two different companies here. Yeah. Um, I so mean... Let, let me ask you something. What, what were your first impressions on the zombies? Zombies? Oh, boy. Um, we haven't played Grief Mode. I haven't played Grief Mode, so... Uh, I can't really judge on that yet. Uh, we'll probably have up, up some gameplay soon because next week is uh, break. So we have a whole week to play that. Um, uh, probably this weekend too. Because uh, yeah, I'm to having Nick over and uh, Sarah, so we'll probably, well, 
hop in the game and play that, and I'll record it, and it'll be kind of a fun gameplay. Uh, but from what I played, the transit mode I like. Um, if you're playing the people that you really like playing with, it's really fun. But my favorite game that I played so far is in uh, survival because we haven't really unlocked all the other maps through transit mode yet so in survival you're in these really small compact maps and you're just like freaking out because there are so many zombies I think we got to around like 12 or something and they're all yeah, over the place about yeah and they were like all over the place you guys are going down I'm going down it's like wow everybody's outside we're not camping we're not doing anything we're all running around doing our own thing and it's nuts and, and, I, and I like the way that they kind of drifted away toward from the organized zombies I mean they, they took a more realistic aspect towards it with the new survival mode I mean as we look back at Black, uh, Black Ops 1 and World at War it, it was more of an organized strategy there, there were trains being ran, there were corners being canned, and now it's just it's basically just unleashing hell like zombies was supposed well, to be the, the newer maps I think as we move along and unlock newer maps, bigger maps I think it's going to get more organized, like the old maps yeah, but probably. we're still going to have the option of playing those smaller crazy maps, you know like uh, Nocturne on Totem I think it was the first zombies map so, yeah. yeah, but uh, the campaign, what did you think of the campaign? So far, I, I'm not too far into the campaign right now, but what, from what I can tell, it, it it really does pick off from where Black Ops 1 left off. It, uh, I'm not, I'm not going to spoil much. I'm just going to let you know that there are, you get to kill a lot of black people. <laughs> there are a lot of Africans and machetes. Cubans and, and Nicaraguans it's, and it's just it's just hectic. It, 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 it's it's fun. It's first just, mission was awesome. Fun campaign. I really it, like it first introduced something that I haven't seen in a Call of Duty game in a while, especially not in any Infinity Ward Call of Duty, and that's actually fun in the campaign. Not just trying to get through it but to get it. Yeah, I mean you're not just trying to get through it to be like, wow, okay, I have to get through this to understand the next game story that comes out in two years. <laughs> It's like, wow, this is absolutely nuts. I mean, you go back in time to the 80s and the 90s and, I think, 2000s, and yep. you get to fight in Afghanistan, uh, Africa, and all these different places, and it's they're like almost... They're not real historical events, but they connect to what they, was actually going on in that time to, period. They connect to what, we, what humans have actually done in the past and yeah. behaviors Stitch. Anyways, back on the topic of uh, Nuketown 2025, what was your first impression on the remake of this map? What, um, what did you think that they could have done differently, maybe? Well, first off, when I put this game in and I played it, the colors kind of just pop because the new lighting system is awesome. So that's the first thing that I noticed in multiplayer was the colors were amazing. And they really updated the colors and the lighting and everything. The textures are kind of the same as Black Ops, too. But um, when I first started playing this uh, yeah. map, um, I noticed that last night when I first played this map is that it was kind of, uh, people were still trying to figure everything out. And then today, tonight, everything was going nuts. It's like, it's like if you go in and you played uh, Nuketown 24-7 in Black Ops, it's kind of like that. There are grenades being thrown everywhere, and it gets kind of annoying because every four seconds there's a grenade going off or a grenade that kills you, and it's just... Yeah. See, see, I've noticed that aside from Nuketown 2025, they've really drawn apart from Black Ops 1. I mean, as we've noticed from Modern Warfare 1 to 2 to 3, especially from 2 to 3, Modern Warfare 3 got that nickname Modern Warfare 2.5 Yeah. because they really didn't make too many drastic changes to it. A few guns here few maps here, maybe a few slight changes in the campaign, but as we've noticed in Black Ops 2, they've really just revamped everything, the new custom class settings, to where you can get extra uh, set it to where you can have two perks in one class, you can uh, there's just it, huge differences and I, I think the fans of the series will really appreciate that they've 
revamp the Call of Duty series into not just being its boring repetitive self that we come to know it as. Well, Treyarch is kind of, that's kind of what Treyarch does. I mean, um, like what they've done with the uh, create a class system I think is awesome. You can have wild cards and everything. You can mm -hmm. customize the hell out of it. I mean, you can have a wild card and you can replace, you can take out your stun grenades, for instance, and you can add an extra perk. So you could have, for instance, uh, fast hands, I think it is. Yeah. And um, it's, it's like ghosts, but it's not. It's, uh, you, you don't appear on the radar for kill streaks. So you can have four uh, perks at once if you give up your stun grenades. Yeah, and you know, when, when, I, when I heard that they were going to base it in a more futuristic time, other aside from Nuketown 2025 looking like a Jetsons episode, I noticed that they, they really didn't make drastic futuristic changes. I, I was honestly expecting robots, transformers looking guns, I was expecting yeah. weird sights, and I mean, aside, aside from a few slight differences, they really have not drawn aside from the, you know, present day theme here. I mean, some of the guns are, some of the guns are guns that are being currently used, and then other guns are, like, the next gen uh, of uh, the guns being used today. Yeah, they're, they're, they're more so just, uh, slight changes to the guns and they've been given new names to so kind of add yeah. that futuristic style to it. I mean, it's like, the way I see it is kind of Modern Warfare 3 improved, mixed with Black Ops. Mm -hmm. so, I've, I've noticed that too. Yeah. Um, they, they took the good things from both Modern Warfare 3 and Black Ops and put it into one game and just completely threw away the bad. Yeah, they just took it and whipped it out the window. I mean, they still have Pretty Kill much. Confirmed. Kill Confirmed, uh -huh. I really like. Yeah, I'm glad they threw that in, too. And I don't know if you noticed, but in custom games, you are still able to do gun game and sharpshooter and games yeah. like that. You know, the old wage games. Like they had Modern Warfare 3. I wish that they would still have the uh, wager matches where you could earn uh, tokens or points or whatever. I, I wish that they still had the point system, because the point system you know, is kind and of I, and I, I, I have a feeling that they might actually do something with that maybe in a DLC later on. I'm not positive. I'm not... I haven't gotten any hot tips on this. I'm 